The Arctic may be even more sensitive to human influence than previously thought. Here's what you need to know. The Arctic Ocean has been warming since decades earlier than previous observations would suggest. According to a new study in the journal Science Advances that used marine debris to reconstruct 800 years of data. The study found that the Arctic water's temperature and salinity, or saltiness, remained relatively constant until the early 1900s, but at that point heat and salt transported from the Atlantic Ocean began to increase substantially, possibly chiming with the period in which humans had begun supercharging the atmosphere with carbon dioxide, and thus possibly suggesting the Arctic is more sensitive to greenhouse gases than previously thought, according to study co-author Francesco Muschitiello, who spoke to CNN. The study is clear that the causes of this early Atlantification are not yet fully understood, but it does suggest changes in the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, currents that moderate temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere, could have played a role, and regardless of the specific mechanisms behind it, CNN notes that once rapid warming in the Arctic causes ice to melt, a feedback loop begins, whereby the lack of ice causes even warmer temperatures, because without the bright white sea ice to reflect away the sun's energy, the dark ocean absorbs it as heat. Detailing how things stand now, Muschitiello added, the Arctic is warming very, very quickly, and much faster than any other area on the planet. An underwater heat blob from the Atlantic is exacerbating the warming of the Arctic Ocean and contributing to the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice, according to a study published in the journal Nature Climate Change. The study shows that the amount of heat transported to the Nordic seas and Arctic Ocean by ocean currents has increased dramatically since 2001. This poleward heat transport has been implicated as one possible cause of the warming of the Arctic Ocean and the rapid disappearance of the Arctic sea ice. Warm, salty water is carried from the tropics to the high northern latitudes through a vast ocean current known as the Atlantic Meridiano Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The AMOC is part of a global ocean conveyor belt known as the Thermohaline Circulation, or Meridiano Overturning Circulation. As warm surface waters travel to regions farther north, they lose heat and gain in salinity as fresh water evaporates. When warm Atlantic water reaches the Arctic, it sinks to form a heat blob because the cool fresh water from the Arctic is less salty and thus more buoyant. This facilitates the formation of sea ice over the ocean. However, the increased transmission of heat to northern latitudes could hinder sea ice formation. Scientists have found hotspots in some parts of the Arctic, such as the Barents Sea, which are starting to more closely resemble the Atlantic. This is happening because warm, salty Atlantic water has begun escaping to the ocean surface, causing warmer ocean temperatures and reducing winter sea ice formation. Scientists call this phenomenon Atlantification. Scientists published a new study in the journal Nature Communications in which they show that Greenland's ice sheet is melting at such a fast pace that it's heightening worldwide flood risks. The study, which was published on Monday, November 1st, also found that the Greenland ice sheet has lost more than 3.5 trillion tons of ice over the past decade, which increased global sea levels by one centimeter. This one ice sheet contains enough ice to raise global sea levels by 6 meters, or 20 feet, and it has been experiencing an increasing number of extreme melting events over the past 40 years. The new research is the first to use satellite data to detect Greenland ice sheet runoff. The satellite images showed significant annual variation in ice melt and showed that heat waves were increasingly a major cause of ice loss above and beyond global temperature increases. In 2012 alone, for example, when changes in atmospheric patterns caused unusually warm air to hover over the ice sheet for weeks, 527 billion tons of ice was lost. Accelerating Arctic warming as a part of global warming is likely responsible for severe winter weather like powerful snowfalls and abnormal cold spells in the Northern Hemisphere, according to a new study. The study, in the journal Science, explains the influence of climate change on the Arctic increases the likelihood of winds above the North Pole being stretched, which in turn makes extreme cold weather events in the U.S. and elsewhere more likely. The freezing temperatures that hit Texas in February, killing dozens and causing 4 million homes and businesses to lose power, became the prompt for the study, according to its lead author who spoke to The Guardian. In the conversation, he explains that Arctic warming is causing changes in its climate, such as melting sea ice and increasing snowfall in Siberia. That, in turn, means levels of energy and moisture moving between the surface of the Earth and its atmosphere are changing. Those changes kick the atmosphere, resulting in upward-moving waves rippling into the stratosphere, where they stretch and weaken the band of fast winds that circles above the Arctic, known as the Arctic Polar Vortex. 
In addition, as the polar vortex shifts around, its effect on winds and temperatures means that the atmospheric waves which affected it are in turn affected by it and are reflected back down to the surface where they can influence weather patterns. Summing up this seeming contradiction of warming causing colder weather, the study's author explained simply, when the polar vortex is nice and circular, that's a sign all the cold air is bottled up over the Arctic. When it stretches like this, a piece of it goes into Asia, and a piece of it goes towards eastern North America. And that was what happened with the Texas cold wave. The Guardian reports that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years, but the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa. While increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe, the AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. The melting of Earth's polar ice is incrementally warping the planet's crust, both vertically and horizontally, according to a new study in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. Scientists already knew about a process called isostatic rebound, whereby when a glacier melts, the crust below it is released from the weight previously on top of it, and so very gradually rises up, in some cases over thousands of years. However, the new study, cited by SciTech Daily, adds to this concept, noting that the deformation of the crust is actually three-dimensional and thus includes horizontal movements as well as vertical ones. The study adds that rather than simply affecting the areas directly below the ice loss, deformation was also found to have global impacts, with Greenland ice sheet and Arctic glacier melting, causing deformation that extends over much of the northern hemisphere, for instance. Case studies showing the incremental scale of the deformation include London, which the study says moved, roughly, between 0.04 and almost 0.2 millimeters vertically every year from 2006 to 2010, plus similar distances to the north and east. The study's lead author, Sophie Colson, explained that we should think of a wooden board floating on top of a tub of water. When you push the board down, you would have the water beneath moving down. If you pick it up, you'll see the water moving vertically to fill that space. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.